Hey, what's up? It's Two Base. Today's video, we're gonna take a look back at the old Nickelodeon show, My Life as a Teenage Robot, and we're gonna see if we can find out what actually happened to it. So let's get this video started. Roll the intro. Class Dingus destroys the Earth. Mom will dismantle me. Stand back, boy. Ah, uh, robot. My life as a teenage robot was created by Rob Rosetti. Rosetti's love for cartoons began at an early age, watching shows like Popeye, stuff from the Hanna Barbera era, even Phyllis the Cat from time to time. How he learned how to draw is that he used to play with paper dolls when he was younger. Basically what he would do is he would get coloring books and whatever pictures he liked in the coloring books, he would get his mom to trace over the pictures for him and she would cut out the drawing that she traced over and he would play with these cutouts like they're figurines. Rossetti did it so much that his mom got tired of tracing the drawings and suggested that he should do this himself. Eventually he grew into the habit of drawing that he'd made it a goal to turn his love for drawing into a career when he got older. As time passed, Rosetti enrolled into our animation program at Columbia College. Before this, he was majoring in art history at the University of Illinois. Coincidentally, Gendy Tartakovsky was also enrolled into the art program. Rosetti and Gendy already met once because Rosetti used to be roommates with Gendy's older brother. Eventually, both Gendy and Rosetti got into Cal Arts where they met Craig McCracken. When Rosetti left Cal Arts, he and Gendy got offered to animate a couple episodes of Batman the animated series in Spain. At that time, episodes of Batman were getting animated around different places around the world because they wanted to get the show done as quickly as possible. Eventually, the company that Rosetti was working for went bankrupt, and afterwards, Rosetti went back home to recuperate for a couple of months. Later on, he got hired as a storyboard artist for Two Stupid Dogs for Hanna Barbera. While working for Hanna Barbera, Rosetti met Fred Seibert. Fred had an idea for a show that broadcast a series of shorts. The show was called What a Cartoon. This is how shows like Papa Girls, Dexter's Lab, Cow and Chicken, and Johnny Bravo got their start. Rosetti pitched one episode of his short called Meeting in the Count, but the short didn't really do that well. When Fred left Hanna-Barbera and went to Nick, and once the contract expired with Meeting in the Account with Hanna-Barbera, Rosetta made five more shorts for Meeting in the Account that premiered on OER oh yeah, cartoons. But the studio considered Meeting in the Account a failure. Since there was another slot open for another short, Fred asked Rosetti to have another idea for a short. The original idea for My Life as a Teenage Robot was kind of different. The original concept was about a teenage girl whose boyfriend was a robot. The title would have been My Boyfriend's a Teenage Robot. Fred told Renzetti that he just got done doing a series about a little girl who has a relationship with a vampire and probably shouldn't do another series about a teenage girl who has a relationship with a robot. When Renzetti was driving to the supermarket, that's when the idea of making the robot into a teenage girl popped into his head. Renzetti quickly found a pen and a piece of paper and began to write the plot for the pilot. Afterwards, he went back to pitch the idea to Fred. Fred liked it and Renzetti started working on the pilot for OER cartoons. The original name for the pilot was My Neighbor Was a Teenage Robot. Three years later, with a couple of changes, the short became a series. XJ9. Bring it on. AKA Jenny. Meet Jenny. She's a robot. A teenage robot. It's about an extraordinary character who's just trying to fit in and be ordinary. XJ9. Can't you call me Jenny? Rocky Power Cat Bot Superhero! Coming August 1st to the only network for brand new Nicktoons, Nickelodeon. My Life as a Teenage Robot premiered on August 1st in 2003. The series follows the robot SJ9 who goes by Jenny, who's voiced by Janice Kawaii. Jenny, along with Brad and his little brother Tuck, get in all sorts of adventures together. Jenny was created to protect Earth, but she just wants to have friends and live a normal teenage life. She even goes to school so she can be around more people her age. Well, mental age. I think she's like 5 years old, physically. But you get it, she just wants to fit in. The show's design was inspired by a couple of things. The main inspiration came for the cartoon styles in the 1930s. Renzetti and his art director at that time, Alex Curran, loved that rubber hose look that came with the art style. And the show is also inspired by old school anime, mainly Astro Boy because Alice is a huge fan of Astro Boy. Teenage Robot still holds up pretty well. I love how in certain scenes the color palette changes, like the background becomes like a more of a rich warm color, and Jenny or whoever's the main focus of that scene becomes like another color palette so the audience can stay focused on them. But I think my favorite part of each episode is when the character is zoomed out of focus and they look way more simplistic. Lots of love went into the show and you can tell, the series won a primetime Emmy Award in 2004 for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation, and also an award from the Awada International Animation Festival for Best Television Series for Children for the episode Speak No Evil. Ah, 
think it's Japanese. You know Japanese? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't understand a word. Quick, to the library! Yeah. 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 The team from My Life as a Teenage Robot even had a blog where they post things from behind the scenes. You know, surprisingly, the chat is still active to this day. Huh. Oh. Oh my. Damn it, okay. What year the show took place is still unknown, but it's speculated that the show took place in the year 2066. Because in the episode, I was a preschool dropout, Jenny commented on how she wasn't around for Super Bowl 100. Super Bowl 100? Nope. And in 2004, Super Bowl 38 happened, and at the time of recording this script, Super Bowl 53 just took place. But Ranzetti debunked this theory, kinda. He said that Teenage Robot took place in the future that the people in the 1930s imagined the future would be. I guess it's like how when some of us were younger and we thought that we had like flying cars by now. But I guess having a device where you can communicate with anyone around the world and order just about anything with the press of a couple of buttons that also fits in your pocket is just as good too. There are a couple of things we need to look at. Around that time, Nickelodeon had two huge hit shows. One was, well, still is SpongeBob, and the other was Fairly Odd Parents. The second thing is a continuity issue. Don't get me wrong, Teenage Robot was episodic, but it still had some continuity. And back then, it wasn't a good idea for shows to have continuity like it is today. Thank you, Avatar. Nick aired some of the shows out of order. Like in the TV movie, Vessis lost her throne to the Cluster Planet, but two episodes later, she's with the Clusters. The second season was even delayed for a couple of months due to low advertisement. The My Life as a Teenage Robot TV movie that I just mentioned premiered in 2005. It did okay, but it wasn't up to Nickelodeon's Spongebob standard. On the Teenage Roblox I mentioned earlier, the staff has confirmed that the Teenage Robot has been cancelled because of low ratings, and the show was replaced by reruns of Spongebob. A third season did get produced before cancellation, but season 3 didn't air until a couple of years later in 2008. It was on Nicktoons Network. I never had Nintendo's network, so when I rewatched this series, season 3 was pretty new to me. Renzetti states that season 4 was supposed to wrap up the entire series. Misty was supposed to come back as a villain, and honestly I would have loved to see that. She beat the gears off of Jenny. He also had plans on creating SJ-10 for season 4. No, I don't, she never made it to a model sheet. She was always like a threat that uh, was sitting there uh, in Wakeman's, in, for Wakeman to use against Jenny. But um, no, I, I, if we had gotten a fourth, year, fourth season, I think we would have introduced XJ-10 at one point. Um, I had some plans for that in fourth season, but you know, we only went to three seasons. So XJ-10 never saw the light of day, and now she never... She never got drawn, so um, I think the idea was going to be that she was going to be um, basically a more socially successful robot than Jenny. Not necessarily a better superhero, though she would have the capability to be better. Uh, and, but the fact that she would be more socially acceptable than Jenny would drive Jenny crazy. You know that she would be a success at school. That was one idea. The other idea was that she would be like a she would be actually younger she would be a, a younger sister to jenny a la kind of buffy and 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 her sister but i since i hated that on buffy i don't know that i ever would have brought that in, brought that in to play on uh, on my show but uh but yeah no she never really got off the drawing board I, we we're definitely gonna um she gets mentioned one or two times in the show but she's never she never saw the light of day so there's still some hope for season four and a group of animators are doing just that they're making a season 4 to wrap up this series, and they've been at it for a while. And there's also a petition that I found. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know if petitions actually work, but I'm gonna sign it anyway, and I'm gonna link it in the description down below. I mean, at the end of the day, we try it, right? Janice has been doing voiceover roles here and there. She was Ichigo's little sister in the English dub of Bleach, and voices Ayane in Dead or Alive 6. We'll probably hear her voice Jenny again because there's a Nicktoons movie in the works. And Jenny's going to make a cameo in some sort of way. Rob Rose has also been keeping busy. He helped produce Gravity Falls. And he's currently an executive producer for Vic City Greens. Good show, by the way. Okay, so that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also, subscribe if you're new. And stay tuned for the Curse of Cali Dog video that's coming up. I just gotta finish the script and make the clickbait thumbnail. So until next time, see you.